In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus Christ has made us a kingdom of priests to serve our God and Father. Glory and kingship be his for ever and ever. Peace be with you. Uh, my dear sisters and brothers, uh, it is a great joy to welcome you again to our Cathedral Church as we gather around the Lord's table to renew our own commitment in his service and to receive from him the blessings of his peace and his purposes for our lives in word and sacrament. Uh, as you may recall, uh, last year uh, the King came on Maundy Thursday for the distribution of the Maundy money, which meant the Chrism Eucharist got, got put back till Tuesday. And here we are again a year later for Maundy Tuesday. We've done it twice now, so it has become a tradition. Um, uh, and I'm still getting used to it, if I'm really honest. I'm still getting used to Maundy Tuesday. Um, but, but this remains the same. Uh, my thanks to you for our partnership in the Gospel. My prayers for you in the ministry that we share. My hopes for you and for our church that amid the trials and horrors uncertainties and confusions of our world, we may rest secure in the knowledge of God's love for us in Jesus Christ. And in this Holy Week, as we celebrate again his dying and his rising, receive the grace that we need for the ministry we share. God shows his love for us in that, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us then show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Come, let us return to the Lord and say, Lord our God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew early. Have mercy on us, deliver us, bind up our wounds and revive us. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord enrich you with his grace and nourish you with his blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your prayers and absolve you from your offences for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen.
let us pray. Heavenly Father, you anointed your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and with power to bring to us the blessings of your kingdom. Anoint your church with the same Holy Spirit that we who share in his suffering and victory may bear witness to the gospel of salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him, being king over Israel. So fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If, Samuel, if Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you. And say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one who I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come to me, come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord, the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. And Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said, Well, send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. And the Lord said, Rise and anoint him. For this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. And Samuel then set out for Ramah. 
This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us, with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. 
We have renounced the shameful things that one hides. We refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we commend ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in clay jars, so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. <clears throat> A dispute also arose among them as to which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But Jesus said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like one who serves. For who is greater? the one who is at the table, or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? For I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you, just as my Father has conferred on me a kingdom so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I can see the look of panic on your faces. There are already two names uh, against the sermon, and now a third person has stood up. Um, uh, uh, sisters and brothers, uh, in the life of our diocese over the past 10 years, we have been richly blessed by uh, Paul and John's ministry as bishops of Whitby and Selby, and as we all know, they will both be retiring uh, later this year. Today isn't the day for farewell speeches or for thanks to them. That time will come later in the year. But on this occasion, when we are gathered together to reaffirm our commitments to ministry, uh, it seemed to me to be a good opportunity to invite them to share with us something of their wisdom and experience. A long while ago, I worked in a church where we had informal Sunday evening services. There was a young woman who often came to them. We both moved on. And it so happened that almost 20 years later, we found ourselves in contact again. Thanks for the services. How are things? Fine. It's been a long time, she said. Oh, but I can pray now. I can pray now. 
With four words, she taught me so much about ministry. It's a privilege to be part of someone's faith journey, but there's no program, no timetable. As ministers, we can encourage, we can set the scene perhaps, but neither from a divine nor a human point of view are we in control. And if there's anything about the ministry that we do that's effective, we might see the evidence of that, or it might happen in such a way that we won't. So, to everybody, and if I may particularly to my sisters and brothers who are in any kind of ministry, thank you for being here this morning. Thank you for being the people who have said yes to the call of Jesus on our lives, perhaps decades ago, not knowing what that call might bring, and still ready to say that yes new every morning. Thank you for looking beyond the obsessive hanging on instant results. Thank you for the patience when the unavoidable business of managing the organisation nibbles away at the time you would rather spend in prayer, in pastoral care, study or evangelism. Thank you for sticking with the church when it is what it should be and when it isn't. And thank you for being the people who live out the themes that Paul is wrestling with as he writes to the Corinthians. Power and vulnerability, death and life. For while we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. In 21st century Britain, we may not be called to suffer the persecutions that Paul knew only too well. But there are those who will call us ridiculous or deluded especially when the Gospel compels us to ask radical questions in and of the society where God has placed us, or of its history. For us to carry in the body and in the body of the Church the death of Jesus means that we will live and tell the story of the transforming power of self-giving love so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible. Or, we might say, the people with whom and for whom we minister might glimpse their worth in the sight of God because you love and serve them. The mum who goes without food for the sake of the kids. The bereaved families caught up in the mess in Hull, the exhausted church wardens, the teachers dreading an inspection, the farmers not sure whether the numbers will work this year, the person you are praying will explore ministry, the people who trust you with their private joys, hopes, fears, pain and guilt. God's children lost in the wilderness of this world's temptations. Do you remember those words from the ordinal? And the whole kaleidoscope of people in your congregation, parish, chaplaincy, workplace, project, and those who walk through the doors of this cathedral. And thank you for being part of a culture shift in the church through your leadership in fostering and building up God's gifts in others and through welcoming experimental ways of mission 
that sit alongside the time-honoured pattern of sacraments and preaching. Please remember, for your own and your family's sake, that time off is not just a divine gift, it's a divine command. And if it's all ever hard going, know that there will be someone who, because of you, because of you, can say, I know I'm loved, Jesus is real for me, I can pray now. I guess this is where you wish you had a coffee break now. <laughs> that comes afterwards, I'm afraid, so here goes. Uh, some reflections on ministry in the journey that I've made and shared with you, again saying thank you to all of you for being part of that journey in different ways. It's been a great ride and a bit roller coastery sometimes, but a wonderful time together over these last 10 years. I want to tell you two short stories about two couples who really captured for me something of what I understand ministry to be about. So the first story is about a young man from the Northeast who went to sea aged 15 and eventually became a captain of various ships. And during that time, he met an old sea captain who gave him a Bible. As a result of that Bible and those conversations, he came to faith and on that journey began to sense, like many of us here, a call to public ministry. At the time, he and his wife had a young family, but in response to that call, they sold their home to pay for their training. And thereafter, all their ministry was in the north of England. I met them when they were serving Christ in a set of mining villages outside Whitehaven in Cumbria. The second story, a young woman and a young man independently had come to faith at university and felt a call to go to Uganda in East Africa. The young woman to start a school for girls the man to teach physics in the emerging university world. They met through the African church, got married, had their family before returning to the UK after 20 years of service to find that there was no equivalent work for my father, certainly who it was, even though my mother was able to find work. A very costly experience the second couple, as I say, were my parents. The first couple were my parents-in-law. And both showed me from an early age that ministry involves following Jesus through thick and thin without concern for future prospects. They also showed me that ministry takes us to the edge of ourselves, but that is the place of growth. They showed me that ministry, as loving service, tells the gospel story often better than words. In short, they were exhibitions of the foot-washing Christ that we recall at this time of year from the 13th chapter of John's Gospel, the Christ hymn in Philippians 2, which describes the landscape of Jesus' life and death and resurrection, and was also captured in our gospel reading this morning. Their stories and the journey I've made in ministry in Sheffield, South Africa, Doncaster, and latterly in this diocese, have given me a number of challenges which I've tried to follow, and I just simply share these with you now. The first challenge I've found is that in ministry, the way to up is down. Ministry means going wherever Christ calls us to go, and this involves relinquishing control and risking the future with God. And what I notice as I read my scriptures and look at the story of the Christian community is that Christ primarily goes to those people and communities that others write off. So the way to up to God means going down to where God is most concerned, serving those who've been written off as the Christ hymn of Philippians 2 shows 
And it was part of this challenge that led us to go to Doncaster. Because at the time we heard the rumor that a former bishop had described Doncaster as the graveyard of his clergy. Well, we thought the graveyard is where you might just find resurrection. And we did. The second theme and challenge that has come to me on my journey is that in ministry, the way to in is out. Jesus and Paul both discovered God's call by serving on and from the margins. Jesus spent most of his time in Galilee rather than in Jerusalem. And Paul was always looking for the next edge in mission. In my experience, and maybe some of you here as well would identify with this, ministry has taken me to my edges, culturally, linguistically, educationally, and in terms of my own capabilities. Yet such experience has grown my faith. And my greatest educators have been the communities where I have felt most out of my depth, such as in Doncaster, in the inner urban parish we were in and in the setting we lived in latterly, and also, of course, in South Africa. The third challenge that's come my way, which I share with you, is that in ministry, the way to talk is to walk. Unless people see the difference Christ makes in our lives as churches and individuals, all we're about is noise. It's the witness of lives lived to the script of Jesus' story which display the gospel. So ministry, as I understand it, involves cultivating Christian communities who can improvise upon the story of Jesus in ways that show local people what that story means for them in their own contexts and in their own languages and dialects, whether that's Sheffield, Rotherham, Doncaster, or Selby English, which are not the same languages or dialects, or whether it's Isiklosa, Zulu, Afrikaans, Luganda, whatever. And then finally, in ministry, the way to Jesus is always with his church. In my journey, I've learned that there is no escape from being part of the rat bag, porcupine, fallible and frustrating community of the church, local, global, and historic. Because it's the church that gives us the story, gives us the language, gives us the practices which form us into Christian communities that might just have a possibility of being characterized by the self-giving, sacrificial, self-effacing love of Jesus as signs of his good news for our society. So I simply offer you these themes that have emerged for me, reflecting on the story of my respective parents and parents-in-law and on the journey that I've made in my own ministry. That in ministry, the way to up is down. The way to in is out. The way to talk is to walk. And the way to Jesus is with his church. Amen. My sisters and brothers, at his last supper, 
our Lord Jesus Christ gave his disciples a new commandment that they should love one another and he prayed that they might be one. He gave them an everlasting sign of his love in the sacrament of bread and wine. He consecrated himself to his Father's service to be the High Priest of the New Covenant. I invite you now to dedicate yourselves afresh to his service as stewards of the mysteries of God and ministers of his grace. So could I first invite licensed lay ministers, lay workers, church army officers, other lay diocesan officers and members of religious community, lay readers, wherever you are in the building, please would you stand. When you were commissioned, you undertook to be faithful in prayer and by word and example to minister to those for whom Christ died. Will you do all that is in your power to witness to God's love for his people? And if I could invite our deacons to stand. At your ordination as a deacon, you received the yoke of Christ who came not to be served but to serve. Will you continue faithfully in this ministry to build up God's people in his truth and serve them in his name? And could I invite our priests to stand. At your ordination to the priesthood, you took authority to watch over and care for God's people, to absolve and bless them in his name, to proclaim the gospel of salvation and to minister the sacraments of his new covenant. Will you continue as faithful stewards of the mysteries of God, preaching the gospel of Christ and ministering his holy sacraments? bishops, you received the gift of the Spirit, that you might lead the church in mission and send out ministers in Christ's name, that you may promote its unity, uphold its discipline and guard its faith, and that you might teach and govern the people committed to your charge. Will you continue faithfully in this ministry, watching over Christ's own flock and building them up in the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. By the help of God, I will. May the God of peace sanctify you wholly and make your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful and he will accomplish it. Amen. Lord have mercy. My brothers and sisters, please pray for all who minister that we may be constant in prayer and steadfast in faith and serve your people with joy. Lord, 
Pray for your deacons, that the Lord may pour upon them the riches of his grace. Pray that he who has called them to his service may make them worthy of his calling. Pray for your priests. Ask the Lord to bless them with the fullness of his love, that they may be faithful ministers of his word and sacrament and lead his people in the way of salvation. Pray for your bishops, that despite our unworthiness, we may be faithful to the great trust that has been handed to us. Pray that we may become more like our Good Shepherd and Great High Priest, the teacher and servant of us all, and so become more and more a sign of Christ's loving presence among you. Pray for the families of those who minister, for all our homes and for those we love, and for all with whom we share our lives. And may the Lord, in his love, keep us ever close to him, and may he bring us all to the fullness of eternal life. God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us and as a pledge of what is to come has given the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing. The oil for the anointing of the sick and dying. Blessed are you, sovereign God, gentle and merciful, creator of heaven and earth. Your word brought forth light out of darkness, and daily your spirit renews the face of the earth. Your anointed Son brought healing to those in weakness and distress. He broke the power of evil and set us free from sin and death, that we might praise your name forever. By the power of your Spirit, may your blessing rest on those who are anointed with this oil in your name. May they be made whole in body, mind and spirit, restored in your image, renewed in your love, and serve you as sons and daughters in your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. The oil for the signing with the cross at baptism. Blessed are you, sovereign God, the protector of all who believe in you. Your anointed Son overcame the powers of evil when he was lifted high upon the cross. By the power of your Spirit, may your blessing rest on those who are anointed with this oil in your name. As they come to the waters of baptism, May it be for them a sign of your defence in their fight against the sin, the world and the devil, and bring them to share in Christ's victory. Blessed be God forever. The oil of chrism for anointing at confirmation. Blessed are you, Sovereign God and Eternal Father, upholding by your grace all who hear your call. Under your old covenant, priests and kings were anointed to serve you, and in the fullness of time, you anointed your Son by the Holy Spirit to be the Christ, the Saviour and Servant of all. By the power of your Spirit, May your blessing rest on those who are anointed with this chrism in your name. Let it be for them a sign of joy and gladness as they share in the royal priesthood of the new covenant and make known the kingdom of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit we lift our voices of thanks and praise. Blessed be God, our strength and our salvation now and forever. Amen.
poverty of our love and the weakness of our praise, the transforming fire of your presence. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also lift up your hearts. We lift them to Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and It is indeed right and good always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. By the outpouring of your Holy Spirit, you anointed him to be the servant of all and ordained that he should enter into your kingdom through his suffering. And now he stands by us and pours out for our healing the oil of consolation and the wine of renewed hope. In your wisdom and love, you anoint your people to be our royal priesthood, to share in Christ's suffering and to reveal his glory to the world. Therefore, earth unites with heaven to sing a new song of praise we too join with angels and archangels as they proclaim your glory without end. you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me.
Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of Mary, the mother of Jesus, Peter, Paulinus, Wilfrid, Hilda, William of York, John of Beverley and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit all honour and glory be yours Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus, Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father.
Let us pray. Good Shepherd, you have welcomed us at your table and have anointed us with the oil of gladness. May your goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our life, that we may dwell in the house of the Lord for ever. Amen. You have opened to us the scriptures, O Christ, and you have made yourself known in the breaking of the bread. Abide with us, we pray, that blessed by your royal presence, we may walk with you all the days of our life, and at its end, behold you in the glory of the eternal Trinity, one God for ever and ever. Amen. please sit down just for a minute. Um, on your behalf, I do want to thank uh, the Dean uh, and Chapter and, and all the, the great team who work for us uh, here in our Cathedral Church to make us welcome on occasions like this. We are very grateful. Please pass on our thanks, especially to all those who are working behind the scenes. There is in a moment uh, beverages of some description and hot cross buns or actually I think they're probably cold cross buns actually but 
um, they, they are waiting for us. Um, uh, I, I did, however, want to, I, I couldn't think of a better time uh, to say thank you to one person in particular who, who has served our diocese extraordinarily um, over I don't know how many years and, and is very soon to retire. Um, Andrew de Smet, I, 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 as you will know, um, I, I can never remember titles, so I can't actually remember what your title is, Andrew, but I, but I, but I, do, know, I do know what you do. Um, or in fact, actually, I don't know what you do, because that, that's, <laughs> that's the whole point. Um, the whole point is that, that you are someone and have been someone who has exercised care. Uh, to the clergy and lay ministers of this diocese. And I know there will be many of us here in the cathedral this morning who have received your care, um, I, either personally, uh, through your prayer and counselling, or signposting us to where we can get the help we need. And in your role as, I think, probably advisor for pastoral care of clergy and lay ministers, is probably something worthy like that. Um, but, but, it, but in that role, um, your ministry has been a huge blessing. You know, I want to say to all of you, as I say to myself, ministry at the moment in the church is hard. Um, we live in a very volatile, polarised world, and some of that does impact into the life of the church. And God is endlessly calling us to love one another. Um, and, and to work together for the unity of the church so that the world may believe. But I do know that ministry is hard and, and all of us have dark and difficult times. Um, many of us don't take the time off we need. Many of us don't get the re rest, retreat and refreshment we need. Uh, and sometimes we find ourselves sinking. I want you to know on behalf of the bishops and archdeacons with whom I serve, we, we are deeply committed to your welfare and we are sorry if sometimes that doesn't express itself in the ways that we would wish. Um, but we have been so grateful that Andrew has been there uh, as someone that you have been able to call and somebody who's offered such great service. Um, we will be finding, nobody will replace you Andrew, but we will be filling the post in a different way uh, with somebody in due course, watch this space. But I thought on this occasion, when the clergy and the lay ministers of the diocese gather, um, we would wish to show you a sign of our appreciation, our great thanksgiving, and the assurance of our love and prayers for you. So, Andrew, do, do stand, but, um, and we can show our care for you. Thank you, Andrew. Now we can all stand. I forgot to thank Jenny for co commissioning us bishops so well, thank you, and the musicians for playing so beautifully. Th thank you so much. The Lord be with you. The Father, whose glory fills the heavens, cleanse you by his holiness and send you to proclaim his word. Amen. The Son, who has ascended to the heights, pour upon you the riches of his grace. Amen. The Holy Spirit, the Comforter, equip you and strengthen you in your ministry. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.